Today I'm joined by one of, if not the top prospect in the women's featherweight division, the undefeated Invicta FC standout, the phenom Felicia Spencer. All right, so uh, yeah, recently, uh, well, I, I recently figured out, I guess, I didn't know that you were from Canada and you live in Orlando right now, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, I was born in Canada. My family moved when I was pretty young. Oh, okay. I was okay. like four, four okay. when I moved away. But, yep, I'm Canadian. Okay, all right, yeah, yeah, I was just thinking, like, I wasn't sure if that was, like, a recent move, like, why'd she move to Florida or not? So, okay, that makes yeah. a lot more sense then. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, so, yeah, your, your nickname uh, is The Phenom. I, I always like to hear about fighters' nicknames and, like, if there's any origin story to that. And uh, you got the clever little play on words, sort of, without it spelt out. So is there any story behind that, <laughs> how you got it? Um, I mean, not much of a story. My nickname around the gym is Fee mm-hmm. instead of Felicia. So everyone called me Fee, and then after I won a fight at some point, they were like, that was phenomenal, and then they just started calling me the phenom. So. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> Gym, so. <laughs> cool, cool. <laughs> All right, so I mean, I imagine that you're still feeling pretty fresh off that Invicta FC 30 high. You know, obviously you got the big win over Helena Kolesnik in the Knights Co main event. Um, you got the job done. You know how how happy were you with how the win came? And did you go out there and like get to show exactly what you planned on doing in the fight? Um, I was I was really happy with it. Uh, I mean, there's always more to show. You know, there's a lot of other things that I worked on that I didn't get to show. But I was happy with, uh, I was happy with my patience and uh, not trying to rush something that wasn't there in the first round, um, and just being comfortable. You know, the whole time. So I was definitely having a good time. Uh, very happy with pretty much everything that happened. <laughs> so yeah, for I mean, only having like five fights now, you definitely looked very composed out there and calm so uh that was it was a great win for sure um and so it kind of came as a big a pretty big surprise to most who are following your division that you ended up taking that fight uh with Klesnik rather than trying out for the upcoming season of the ultimate fighter you know uh you explained in an interview with James Lynch why you passed up on that which was the kind of keep improving your record along with being paid for it which is always a a plus of course (laughs) so now seeing that a lot of the veterans didn't make the cut for the show it, you know, it could kind of give you some better options for immediate future opponents. So uh-huh. does that make you feel like even better about passing up on it? Or how do you look at that in hindsight? Um, yeah, it, I mean, it definitely doesn't make me regret my decision or anything. Yeah. I'm definitely excited to uh, have more available opponents for this, uh, you know, one more fight, hopefully this year. And uh, we're definitely in talks already about what that's going to be. And I'm excited to, you know, be able to announce the next opponent sometime before the end of the year and go get my 6 and 0 that I wanted for this year so that'd be awesome. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Is there any like uh, a time frame you're looking at a specific month or you're just like before the end of the year? Yeah, before the end of the year. Okay, for okay, sure. cool. Yeah, so well, speaking of that, uh, after the fight, <laughs> we got some call-outs from you. <laughs> so, of course, you know, I'm referencing uh, the call-outs of Pam Sorensen and more specifically uh, Megan Anderson. Uh, did you mm-hmm. did you plan on doing that after the winner? Was this like a spur of the moment kind of thing? <laughs> uh, well, I kind of talked about it. You know, my team is, uh, you know, they're always um, encouraging me to be more vocal, <laughs> you know, trying to help promote myself. It's mm-hmm. all part of the game. So, um, I mean, it's not like I, I didn't like rehearse it, but it was definitely <laughs> something that we talked about, like what would be the, you know, the best maybe way of, of calling someone out without you know losing myself i don't want to be you know a mean person trying to be a jerk calling people out but i just try to put things in the best way in the best light you know yeah um so so yeah i'm I'm happy that i did it i'm glad that it was a surprise i guess and i'm glad that she was there to come and stand in front of me that was pretty cool yeah definitely it was yeah, I, I didn't see it coming. I'm, I'm sure a lot of people did. So it worked out pretty great, <laughs> and it's, it's it made sense too. It was a really like a, a thing. Oh that, yeah. Oh, and I love that she wears like four inch heels too. So it made us look like <laughs> such a big difference. That makes me smile even more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I mean, what did you think of like her idea of fighting in her home country of Australia, like, but for your potential first UFC debut? Yeah, I mean, 
I mean, that's just her idea. It's mm-hmm. not really up to the people behind the scenes to make that decision, but I think that would be really exciting. So, um, so yeah, maybe maybe that would be able to happen. I'm not sure. Yeah, that would. That <laughs> right would now, be... still, you know, talking with Invicta, but you never know what, what the future holds. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you kind of been touching on it, you know, for the future and whatnot. So I, I mean, it feels pretty safe to say like that the next move for you is really one of three options and you know correct me if I'm wrong this is just kind of how I'm looking at it but you know being the very talented prospect that you are it's only up from here so would I, I would imagine that Bellator and the UFC have their eyes on you then of course you're an incredibly obvious candidate for the next title shot in Invicta so like with that said it hasn't been all that long but you know I'm kind of touching on it so is there any idea who what your next where your next fight will be or anything like that <laughs> about a title fight in the you know before the end of the year so um you know i'm not sure how much I'm, i'd be allowed to say mm-hmm, but that's definitely the direction that it looks like it's going to be um for this for this next opportunity so mm-hmm. hopefully that kind of answers your question that's all good yeah and uh no ideas on opponents or anything <laughs> <laughs> um yeah we there is definitely uh, an idea for a veteran of Invicta. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say his names or anything, or if she's, you know, on the same page as, and you know, mm-hmm. I've agreed with Invicta for this opponent. I'm not sure if it's a, uh, you know, both parties have agreed yet. Mm-hmm. So, all right, so it's all on them. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. Felicia's down to fight everybody. <laughs> <laughs> all right, yeah. So circling back to tough a little bit. Uh, the cast has been revealed, like, with really no veterans, as it was mentioned. Uh, instead, it's a majority of 135ers, really, going up for it. Uh, what do you think of all that and really just how the UFC's handled their introducing of the division overall? I'm perfectly fine with it. Um, you know, the whole weight-cutting uh, controversy has been going on for a while. You, but, you know, they recommend, she's like, re- or, you know, recommends people moving up in weight, they're cutting too much, you know, a lot of those 135ers were cutting 20 plus pounds, you know, week of a fight to make that weight, which is, you know, they're 145ers naturally, they're just cutting that much weight, you know, mm-hmm. I feel like some of them were in that category at least, um, you know, but but at the same time, I can understand the, you know, kind of looking at it like, oh, none of these girls have records at 145 and things like that, well, some of them do, Um but I'm perfectly fine with it. You know, I think people fighting closer to their natural weight is better anyway. So yeah. um, I definitely have no no problem at all with it. Yeah, it, it's, you know, just an interesting thing. People are assuming that it's they're just going up to get in the UFC, then, you know, leave the division just to just they're just doing it to get there, you know. So, yeah, just, I, I can see that, too. Yeah interesting thing which doesn't really help featherweight which is no bueno <laughs> yeah true. but we'll see so yeah i know that a lot of fighters um some of them they a lot of people fighters they watch fights also but there's some who don't really like as fans i guess is what i'm getting at fighters that are also fans uh do you also like watch fights as a fan or are you just kind of strictly fighter no i'm definitely a fan of you know, fighting. I, I I catch most of the the shows, and you know, if nothing, I'm at least listening to the MMA podcasts and all the shows and everything every week while I work. So I'm definitely a fan of the sport. I'm probably not like the biggest, mm-hmm, you know, yeah. uh, keeping up with everything because it's just that that would be a full time job. I'm sure. You know that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I definitely keep pay attention to to the sport. So. Awesome, awesome. Do you have a like a favorite podcast? As you're saying, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I've always been. I've always listened to like Ariel. You know, just mm-hmm. the, the typical. Nothing really underground for yeah. me. Just like the typical stuff yeah, you yeah. find. MMAfighting.com and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So. 